Hi everyone and welcome to Ohio Update. I'm Tom Bosco. I'm standing next to the Sundial, which commemorates the site of the first building on Ohio University's campus. You may not know it, but the history of Ohio University is directly linked to the history of our nation. This is a campus that always reminds us of the past. Ohio University English professor Sam Crowell should know. He's been lecturing incoming freshmen for years on Ohio University's place in American history. This is an old university, a university that is very much connected with the American, American democratic experiment as it moved westward from the original colonies. It all started with the dreams of revolutionary war veterans. The government promised to pay them, but the vets realized our young country might not be solvent anytime soon. So they gathered in Boston's Bunch of Grapes Tavern and came up with a better idea. Instead of taking payment in money, they would take land west of the Alleghenies, known as the Ohio country. It takes our history right back to the very beginning of the Republic. The very summer that the Constitutional Convention is meeting, there is this probably uh, the most important piece of legislation to emerge in the first 20 years out of our legislature because it allowed for the development of the country. And there we are right at the forefront of all of that. Cutler, a contemporary and friend of founding fathers Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin, and others, also knew that education must be an important use for the land. At his insistence, lawmakers put this provision in the Northwest Ordinance. Religion, morality, and knowledge being necessary to good government and the happiness of mankind, schools and the means of education shall forever be encouraged. Those words greet visitors to Ohio University every day. They're written on the college gate behind me, as does the building named after Manasseh Cutler, Cutler Hall, which is the oldest building on campus and the centerpiece of the college green. With me now is Betty Hollow, the author of the book Ohio University, A Singular Place, which is, was written for the bicentennial of the university. Yes. You did a lot of research on this. And as you did your research, tell me something that uh, either surprised you or something you didn't know about Ohio University. Well, it surprised me that so many people said you have to really show how Ohio University is different from other public universities, and they said it is. And when I asked them, what do you mean by that? They would say, well, it's so much more democratic and open than a lot of other public universities are. Well, give me some examples of that, especially how students have been involved. Well, students really do participate at Ohio University, and they always have. For example, in the 1890s, they were responsible for helping to build and maintain the equipment for the first electrical units at the, at the university. Uh, everybody probably knows that they started WOUB and they still run it, uh, WOUB radio and TV, every single day, every single night. It was international students, three South African students who started our Athens Film and Video Festival that we still have every spring. And it was also international students who started the uh, International Street Fair. And of course, it was students who started the food buggies that we still have uh, along Union Street. A great history for students and uh, great involvement for them over the years. Certainly. Thanks very much, Betty. Appreciate you being here. And Ohio University's history, of course, is rich because its leaders always look to the future, and that continues today. Just take a look at the newest tradition on campus, Baker University Center. Baker opened in winter of 2007 and features five floors of space for student activities and offices, as well as an upscale restaurant, a food court, and a new take on an old favorite, the Front Room Coffee House. The old Baker Center will soon become part of the Scripps College of Communication. When the remodeling is complete, all the schools of communication will have a central, state-of-the-art facility and the Integrated Learning and Research Facility, a collaboration between the College of Osteopathic Medicine and the Russ College of Engineering and Technology, is in the planning stages as well. The facility's open design, project rooms, and learning studios will foster teamwork on projects across disciplines. Thanks for watching Ohio Update. If you'd like to learn more about Ohio University's history and see more of my interview with Betty Hollow, you can go to our website. That's www.ohio.edu slash ohioupdate. For Ohio Update, I'm Tom Bosco.